Well, we are about two months away from the provincial election, scheduled for June the 2nd, also on the schedule, the budget, which was supposed to take place today. But last month, the Ford government rewrote a provincial law to delay the budget and avoid paying a penalty. The budget now has to be delivered by April the 30th. Well, as we look forward to Election Day, a new Angus Reid poll shows 37% of decided voters say they would vote for Premier Ford and the PC party. But the poll also shows Ontarians are much more likely to say that the Ford government has done a poor job versus a good one in its handling of all the issues noted in the survey. Here to break down the poll and the issues, Shachi Curl, president of the Angus Reid Institute and journalist Alan S. Hale with Queen's Park today. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Shachi, let me start with you. This seems ironic that the, the PCs will get re-elected, but people in the poll are dissatisfied with almost their handling of every issue. So right now, are we inching toward a PC majority? If so, why or why not? Oh, so much to unpack. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, uh, two months is is millennia in mm -hmm. politics, as we know. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of road to go. You could be in a situation where uh, 10 days before the election, something happens or changes, and, and that may well be the case. Uh, let's hope for an exciting campaign. Uh, so there's a couple of different things to unpack. First of all, there is a difference between being unhappy with the job your uh, government is doing, whether that's a federal government, a provincial government, a municipal government, and having an appetite for change. Because, of course, the, the choice for voters isn't Doug Ford or not Doug Ford or the PCPO or not the PCPO. It's Doug Ford or Andrea Horwath or uh, Mr. Del Duca. So you've got three different options. And, you know, are Ontarians ready to go uh, to return to to uh, Ontario liberal government? Uh, or are they still in the penalty box? Certainly the polling uh, puts them at a place that uh, only has about a quarter of decided voters. Mm -hmm. And you see that left of center vote split. Uh, very much between uh, between the NDP and the Liberals, which, of course, uh, speaks to an advantage for the PCs in Ontario. Notwithstanding the fact that we were actually in, full, in, in field with this poll uh, right before the, the announcement of the $10 a day child care uh, mm -hmm. program that's now been rolled out and announced. So let's see what the impact of that is, particularly on parents of younger children. Does that move the needle one way or another and of course the other huge X factor that will uh, be very determinant over the coming weeks is what happens with the pandemic as mm -hmm. we know uh, Ontarians are not happy with the Ford uh, government's take on pandemic management. They don't really give them winning points on anything, on any issue across the board. But if the pandemic gets worse, and if Premier Ford is seen to be out of step with responding to that, it could be very challenging. On the other hand, this is a politician who has shown he can pivot. He has shown that he is not interested in getting involved in federal conservative politics. And those are two things that may help him along the way. Mm -hmm. Alan, I promise promise we'll get to you, but Sachi is, I mean, when we consider, you talked about the, the moving of the needle here. Premier Ford has moved up 13 points this quarter in terms of his approval rating. So if there were to be an election today, let's say, and, and we know that the politicians all say the only poll that counts is on election day. Are we inching toward a, a PC majority? I mean, how likely is that to happen again? I don't want to commit to anything <laughs> two months before okay. Election Day. But what I will say is, if this trend continues, uh, and again, we really have to think about leadership here, and we have to think about whether Ontarians have an appetite to see a change in their provincial leadership, then that will, that will certainly put the Ontario Conservatives in a much more comfortable place than they might have been a while ago. And so what are some of the factors around that? Again, pandemic management is going to be a big part of it. But also, let's see what's in this budget. We know that incumbent governments love to table budgets right before an election or heading into an election period uh, that uh, that is filled with goodies. And then again, you know, this is not Ms. Horwath's first uh, rodeo or, or indeed her first election. She hasn't made the case to Ontarians yet for why Ontario should go back to an NDP government. We haven't seen NDP government at the provincial level in Ontario since the early 90s. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and let's see if uh, there is an appetite to bring the Ontario Liberals, the era of Kathleen Wynne and Dwight Duncan, uh, back to the fold, or if uh, the Ontario Liberals, after many, many years in government, are still in the penalty box. Usually mm -hmm. when we see a big, significant change, I'll just, I'll finish this point because I want to hear what Alan has to say. <laughs> um, you know, where, where we are at often is a, a change in government uh, generally leads to at least two terms. And that's just what history shows us. There's always exceptions. Let's see what happens. Game on. Uh, that's a good uh, tidbit of perspective. Statue, thank you. Alan, uh, on that note, I want to point out that in this recent poll uh, from the Angus Reid Institute, the Liberals actually moved up uh, several points. I believe it is six from memory. Um, I'm wondering, Alan, what do you think is the reason the PCs are polling so well, but then when we look at the breakdown of issues, they are failing because of the lack of confidence the voting public has in the NDP or Liberals? Is that what it is, you think? I'm not sure, honestly. I think there is... Um, there's definitely a bit of inertia, I think, behind... Um, this poll, um, things are getting better. Uh, we've uh, lifted restrictions, and I think people are feeling good about that. I do think the point where a change of government does tend to have two terms uh, is a very va is a very poignant one. Um, but I th also think that the um, the conservatives over this past term have really gotten the message, and that message is that th that uh, Ontario doesn't really want a um it doesn't really want a hard like uh fiscally conservative government um we, we before uh, <laughs> but, uh before his brother died the uh uh doug ford was always talking about how he wanted to stop the gravy train but really mm -hmm. if you looked at what they've been up to in the past couple weeks with just day after day after day of like uh new funding announcements mm -hmm. Really, Doug Ford is driving the gravy train at this point. And, and there's a, there's I think a, it a might one be yesterday. For them. Yeah, well, there's a housing affordability announcement. Or, mm -hmm. a, sorry, I should say there was an announcement yesterday on getting, you know, homes and, and condos and apartments built faster here in the province. But there, the part of it that was supposed to be about affordability didn't really land. Uh, so I want to get to that because when we look at the poll put mm -hmm. out by uh, Sachi and her team, the big issue people have with the Ford government, and we can put up some of the numbers here, is that they feel, the, the, the respondents, the Ford government is failing when it comes to housing affordability. But Alan, when we look at some of the other issues, uh, Ontarians' feelings about Poverty and homelessness and senior care, uh, those are the ones where the Ford government got these failing grades. Uh, when we look at these topics, mm -hmm. they fall under the same theme, the most vulnerable in our community. Is the continued feeling in the lead up to the election going to, to be the PCs don't prioritize the most vulnerable? Uh, this is also the, the group that's less likely to vote. And no one is mm -hmm. going to forget the tragedy in long-term care and in which the, the inquiry, or I should say, uh, the inquest, uh, the, the inquiry that took place, I'm trying to recall the wording, it, wasn't, it was not a public inquiry, it was a report, a commission. Mm -hmm. uh, so what do you think, what, what impact will that have? Well, I think um, the PCs would like very much for people to forget what happened to uh, long-term care. And um, I think they're trying to make people, the people who aren't likely to just... Uh, look to the future and not worry about what happened in the past. They're trying to assuage those concerns with, um, well, lots of lots more uh, like funding announcements. I don't think a week goes by where we don't get an announcement from uh, the government about them putting a building a new long term care home or uh, expanding beds in an existing one. Um, they're also trying to um, uh, they're finally making the um, uh, personal support workers uh, pay uh, increase, increase that they mm -hmm, got during mm -hmm. the, uh, yeah. Uh, and that's become make permanent, that. They've yes. made that permanent at, at last. And uh, I really think they're just trying to portray themselves as being like good stewards of the system from here on out. And maybe that'll work. Maybe that will yeah, that will assuage the concerns. I, I don't think the opposition is likely to let them do that. The message definitely will be the They'll be hammering them on this the entire campaign. Uh, yeah, final question here for Shachi. We have 45 seconds. When we take a look at the opposition, as I was saying to Alan, your poll has the NDP in second, but they dropped four points. And as I was saying, the Liberals in third, but they had some growth in polling numbers. Why the growth there from the Liberals? Where does any of this leave questions or early backroom talks on a potential NDP Liberal deal? What do you think? 
So the early backroom talks, and, and we've seen some speculation about that, to the extent that they hold water or don't, really changes the political calculus for Ontario voters, because then they have to decide, do we want uh, an NDP Liberal government in Ottawa, and do we also want an NDP Liberal government at mm -hmm. Queen's Park, yes or no? Completely different ballot question. So again, this really comes down to you know, who brings the better game in this campaign? What is the appetite for change? And remembering always that in politics, it is generally a game of inches. So uh, do the number of people uh, upset over education, over mask mandates in schools, who have dealt with the tragedies of family members being lost in, in long-term care, does that uh, swing the political math in one direction? And mm -hmm. do those feel-good, uh, big money spending announcements swing voters in another direction? And if affordability ends up becoming a key emerging issue, again, we're going to have to see not only how does the Ford government respond, but how do the opposition parties respond? And can they make a case that they will be better stewards mm -hmm. to solve things like housing affordability? Lots to cover. Mm -hmm. and we got to go on that note, strategy. I want to thank you, thank Alan. We have two months and two days to continue to talk about this. Thank we you do. both tonight. Thank you. Thank you.